What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I am back with another Destiny 2 video and today we're going to cover all the news from the past few days and damn, there's loads to go through including last night's weekly twab from Bungie on Destiny 2 and many many forsaken changes in terms of what's going to be happening to your current materials you have stacked and so forth. But before we get to that guys, remember every month I give away a fully customizable controller to be in with a chance of winning it, simply drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. More details at the end of the video people. Okay, so let's get into it and starting with the web. And this is about mods, quoting Bungie right here. One topic we've seen a lot of questions about is how we'll migrate from old weapon mods to new weapon mods. Starting on August 28th, your current mods will be deprecated and your inventory will tell you that you can safely discard them for materials and parts. On September 4th, the gunsmith's inventory will be dedicated to new Forsaken mods. Between now and the preload on August 28th, use your Year 1 mods to lock in the elemental damage type you want for your Year 1 weapons. They will retain that damage type after the mod deprecation. On August 28th, the old mod slot will go away and you will no longer be able to insert any mods into Year 1 gear or change the elemental damage type. Some weapons will be moving to the kinetic slot and will not retain elemental damage regardless of what mod you had applied. The Ikela sniper rifle and shotgun will be locked to solar. Here are the legendary weapons that will be moving to kinetic. The Berry Gent, the Shepherd's Watch, the Hawthorne Field Forge Shotgun, alone as a god, Perfect Paradox, the Frigid Jackal and the Silicon Neuroma. There is plenty about to change. Right now it's a good time for us to set your expectations about a lot of it. Now I actually have a preparation guide for the Forsaken coming pretty soon so stay tuned for that. I will cover all mods, materials and so forth which I believe you need to be preparing for by going out and farming. I do mention within that video that year 1 weapons with elemental burn types will be locked in place like this 12 states. So if there's a certain weapon you want multiple burn types of, i.e. the EP shotgun, the scout, you'll have to go out there people and farm multiples of the same weapon and apply those burn mods before the Forsaken drops. Let's just hope if there's any other weapon you want and you change the burn type on and farm multiple versions of it, let's just hope it doesn't move to that kinetic slot because then it will be a waste of your time. They then go to talk about how you will become legend in year 2. Weapon tunings and systems aren't the only things that are changing in Forsaken. When your next journey begins, you'll also discover new ways to earn rewards and become more powerful. The investment team can give you a sense of what's coming. Quoting the investment team, here are high level goals for progression and economy in season 4. We want to bring back the days when you are impressed when you see someone at max power in the tower. The experience of leveling and then powering up should be meaningful. Players should have a sense of discovery when earning rewards from different activities. I 100% agree on that and I missed that from Destiny 1. When players accomplish something difficult, the reward should be special or unique. Couldn't agree more. Not all sources of power in a week should be apparent on the director. That's pretty cool too. Acquisition of power. In year 1, an activity such as a raid would have an absolute range of power that it could generate. Rewards grant only a small difference in power level. Even if you were overcoming the challenge while underleveled, in Forsaken we are scaling the power production of all content by the difficulty of that content. If you manage to beat the raid while 40 power under the recommended level, you should expect to receive the most potent rewards. When players earn powerful rewards, these items should never scale down to where they do not give an increase in power. Even if your power is 100 over an activity's recommended level, it should still grant at least one power a level above your current average. This means that players still benefit from grouping with teammates who haven't accomplished as much as they have. We've also created multiple new sources of power for powerful rewards that refresh on a different cadence than the weekly reset. The goal is to provide more to do for the players who want to play a variety of activities. That said, not every reward you find in the world will be a powerful upgrade. We don't want to spoil the entire journey to max power, so we'll be leaving it in the hands of the players to discover the best ways to reach endgame and beyond when Forsaken is released. Pretty damn cool, and I like the changes they mentioned here. They then go on to state, as a final note on power, we've heard a lot of feedback concerning the exotics to make these rewards feel more useful. Whenever you receive an exotic reward in the Forsaken, it will always be at or above your guardian's power. So that's pretty cool too, and this is definitely not the case in the current standard. 
Moving on to milestones. The milestone tree has been revamped in Forsaken and now will specifically show the most important, non-repeatable quests for every player of Destiny 2. The campaign quests are a good example of this. Meanwhile, our wheel quests for destinations will now live in the pursuit section of your character inventory. Many milestones from year one have been converted to activity challenges. These will continue to grant powerful rewards, but they will no longer be displayed in the milestone tray. When you access the director, you'll see activity challenges in the tooltip of the associated activity. And we get an example on screen now from Quick Play within PvP. We also see the new director once the Forsaken drops looking super pretty people. Moving on to activities. The base strike playlist for Destiny 2 Forsaken. Players have been updated to feature difficulty selection and modifiers. Heroic strikes are being retired on August 28th with Destiny Update 2.0. Damn, they're getting rid of heroic strikes? Really? Forsaken players. The strike playlist has three difficulties to select from. Power 300, 400 and 500. Once you're 40 power over a given playlist, it will no longer appear as an option for you to select. Wow, this ensures a healthy matchmaking pool when players reach end game power levels. Damn, the power 500 playlist will always be available. Strikes will have modifiers. Legacy players. The strike playlist matches the legacy playlist that is currently available in year one. The recommended power is 200. Strikes will have modifiers. Between August 28th and September 4th, modifiers will be unavailable for all strike playlists. The Nightfall activity is also being revisited in Season 4. Prestige difficulty is being retired, but the base difficulty for the Nightfall actually will increase. Additionally, players will have the ability to choose one of three Nightfall strikes each week. If there's a specific Nightfall unique reward that a given player is hunting for, this reduces the time they have to wait for the strike to be featured again. While having three options, players may only select the strikes for which they own the appropriate expansions. Legacy players will still be able to enable modifiers via their challenge card. Scoring will not be available for legacy players in the 270 power nightfall. Meditations are being retired and replaced with a heroic story playlist. New campaign missions will be featured at 500 power, while all campaign missions will be set to a power level relative to their release. This ensures legacy players can still enjoy story activities at their leisure. I raise Vanguard Research reputation tokens will no longer be used as a currency after August 28th and will be removed from player inventories. So if you've got them stacked people, use them while you can. The legendary parade gear will also no longer be available, so if you want it, get it before August 28th. Heroic adventures are being added to all destinations. When their destination is Flashpoint, one adventure will be selected to be heroic per day, with the exceptions of Mercury and Mars. Those two destinations will function as they currently do, but they will gain an additional adventure per day when they are the featured flashpoints. Players will no longer be able to purchase normal adventure tokens from vendors on destinations other than Mercury and Mars. Activity modifiers will be shared across heroic adventures, heroic story missions and strikes. This ensures that each day you know what to expect from the PvE content that you play as a ritual and that when we balance and tune modifiers it's becoming across the game. This will include one weekly singe, one daily buff and one daily debuff. The brawler and the grenadier modifiers will have their recharge times adjusted to ensure they're noticeable. Adjusting your equipment for either also has a rather significant impact. We've seen some pretty crazy plays by the new solo hunter in our playtest. Some experienced players out there may be reminded of the feelings found when and they equipped nothing manacles in the past. Oh, I remember those days, people. Economy updates. For the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of players asking about items and currencies available in year one and whether they continue to be available in year two or not. Expect the following changes on August 28th when Destiny Update 2.0 becomes available. Destination materials will become your main source of reputation and their respective destinations. Destination materials will be a part of the cost to infuse different weapons and armor across your arsenal. This is how it was in Destiny 1, people. If if you remember that, a lot of armors and weapons I believe required planetary materials to actually upgrade them. Year 1 challenges that granted reputation tokens are being retired but will be replaced by bounties offered on each destination that provide destination materials. Destination tokens and rare destination materials are no longer awarded but you can still redeem them for reputation if you have them in your inventory. Anything that previously granted destination tokens or rare materials will reward common destination materials moving forward. Moving on to the gunsmith people and the gunsmith will also be updated in season 4. In year 1 this vendor required 40 gunsmith materials 
materials for one reputation package. This will increase to 100 gunsmith materials. Damn, people! I actually have almost 7,000 of these stacked. So that's 70 packages for me so far upon Forsaken's release, but I will get more by the time it drops. I am Banner, Vanguard and Crucible tokens in Season 3 may be redeemed at their respective vendors in Season 4. I actually have almost 400 I am Banner tokens stacked. Trials of the Nine will be on hiatus during Season 4 and its reputation tokens will not be redeemable at this time. We have not yet determined whether it currently will be used when it returns. Damn! So some major changes there people, there seriously is and a lot of things you should be and shouldn't be doing in prep for the Forsaken. Now moving on, and Lord Saladin makes his final appearance in Season 3 next week. This will be your last chance to earn Season 3 rewards, or actually farm those tokens people, in prep for Forsaken. It begins Tuesday August 14th and ends Tuesday August 21st. The game as always is Control and there are a few changes to the Iron Banner Control you know and love. Iron Temple Fire Pits have replaced the usual Control Flags. There is also a new power rule where capturing all three zones will lock them down for 20 seconds. At the end of the power play all the zones are reset to neutral and must be recaptured. That's actually epic! Power enabled starting in Season 4 Iron Banner will be updated to enable power level advantages. Like in the days of old all players of Destiny 2 regardless of expansion ownership can participate in Iron Banner events. Year 2 rewards featuring random roles and compatibility with Year 2 modifications will also be available to all players. Players who acquire new power during their adventures in Forsaken will have an advantage but we don't want to exclude anyone who wants to compete in Iron Banner and reap the rewards. Iron Banner rewards will be capped for legacy players at their maximum power available which I believe is 400. Trials of Nine will be unavailable for the duration of Season 4. The design team is putting it back on the workbench to make it a fitting challenge for the Hardcore Warrior. When the weekly activity returns, it will feature updated rewards, power advantages and other gameplay changes. The final weekend of Season 3, Trials of Nine will take place on uh, the weekend of August 24th. We'll tell you more about our goals and progress during Season 4. Damn people, Trials of Nine will not be available during Season 4, that's a long time. You won't be able to play Trials, that's, that's actually crazy, it really is. Moving on to Factions, and they state Faction Farewell. In Season 3, we introduced some changes, notably the renowned mechanic to Faction Rallies. The community responded with a lot of great feedback about how we could continue to improve the experience. The feedback ranged in topics from experience to rewards, but many of you expressed the following. I don't want to feel forced to participate in every instance of the event each season. Make the event progression a bit less hardcore and more engaging. We plan to take the feedback and use it to improve activities and events in the future. When Season 4 begins, Faction Rallies will be on hiatus. This will give us a good opportunity to focus on some other areas of the game that need attention and reevaluate some of the fundamental aspects of the event. While the Faction Rally event is on hiatus, Faction Tokens will not be redeemable. We'll tell you more about their fate in the future. For players who were unable to acquire specific exotic weapon catalysts during previous Faction Rallies, we are working on new ways for you to earn them. They will not be available at the beginning of Season 4 but we will provide more information on where to find these rewards when they become available. Moving on to Eververse, a new season begins with the launch of Forsaken. Eververse also gets a refresh. Goals and philosophies. Provide players with more data. Share bright engram reward probabilities on Bungie.net. Provide players their private purchase history on Bungie.net. Give players more choices to earn rewards the way they want. Full season of Prismatic Matrix. Free weekly prismatic face it. More bright dust earned from new bounties. Awesome. Allow players new ways to customize their guardians. Ghost projections. Epic. Legendary weapon skins. New exotic ornaments and emotes. Epic. Eververse bounties. Similar to how other bounties work, Tess will start offering bounties that reward bright dust to players. Here's how they work. Each Bright Engram grants one bounty null in Season 4. Bounties refresh weekly, but players can acquire as many Eververse bounties as they have bounty notes. These notes can be exchanged for three different tiers of weekly Eververse bounties. Tier 1 costs one Eververse bounty note, rewards 20 Bright Dust. Tier 2 costs three Eververse bounty notes, rewards 70 Bright Dust. Tier 3 costs six Eververse bounty notes, rewards 150 Bright Dust. You can carry one of each type at a time. Bounties will expire seven days after activation. Acquisition. So that seems pretty fair to me. I mean, I always run short on Bright Dust, I really do. I mean, there's so many things she sells for Bright Dust which I just can't afford. So this will hopefully help me out. 
the prismatic matrix the prismatic matrix returns in season four we've received a lot of feedback that players enjoyed this feature and would have preferred it to have stayed active for all of season three this time we plan to keep the prismatic matrix live through season four the three weekly prismatic face it will be obtained from a special tier one eververse bounty this bounty does not require a bounty note and will cost 250 glimmer players will still be able to hold three prismatic faces at one time Bright Dust, continuing with the theme of giving players more control over their Bright Dust balance, Bright Dust gain from dismantling Eververse items will be granted at a fixed rate. Players can now reliably dismantle items for specific gains. Collections and Eververse items, Eververse items will be retrieved from the collections interface like all other items. An exception is year 2 Eververse armor which like all other armor with random rolls cannot be reacquired from the collections the way in which players acquire and interact with emotes and weapon armor ornaments have not changed all of the items can be retrieved for an expense of bright dust current season eververse items which have not been acquired will display in the collections interface at the end of the season past season eververse items which have not been acquired will display in the collections interface this prevents players from having incomplete collections that cannot be completed absolutely epic people because i am missing the six shooter emotes and the selfie emotes i never got them drop with this feature i will be able to get them that's amazing people bright engram updates new legendary weapon ornaments have been added to bright engrams these are unlocked account wide like all of the ornaments in the game a new goals projections category will also be added to bright engrams this account unlockable item permits players to put a holographic projection badge above their ghost this badge is only visible when players have their ghost deployed for navigation mode. Weapons and armor mods will no longer be dropping from Bright Engrams. In their place, players will now receive bounty notes. Eververse armor and perks. With the addition of random perk rolls on armor, we have made some changes to how perks are applied to Eververse armor. Eververse armor acquired from Bright Engrams will have random perks when rewarded. Eververse armor acquired from sources like the Prismatic Matrix or the Bright Dust storefront will have fixed perks. Eververse leveling rewards in Forsaken. Like the Red War campaign in Destiny 2 in Forsaken, Bright Engrams will not be earned until you hit level cap. As players complete pre Forsaken campaigns, they will be rewarded with an Eververse gift package tailored to each experience, which will also include Bright Engrams. Once players reach their level cap, based on what expansions they own, Bright Engrams will once again be awarded each time a player levels up. And then moving on, and lastly I believe, Valor for All. If you've been working on your Solstice armor, you may notice a few objectives are tied to the Crucible. Once you reach Legendary Tiered Armor, your final Crucible objective is to have your Valor rank reset. At some point since Crucible ranks were implemented. Leading up to the beginning of year 2, you'll see multiple opportunities to earn Valor points at an accelerated rate including a special Triple Valor Iron Banner weekend. Mark your calendars appropriately. Double Valor week starts 10 a.m. PDT on August 10th, 2018 and ends 10 a.m. PDT on August 17th. Triple Valor weekend starts 10 a.m. PDT on August 17th and ends 10 a.m. PDT on August 21st. Final Double Valor weekend starts 10 a.m. PDT on August 24th and ends 10 a.m. PDT on August 28th. So yes people, if you need to reset that Valor, Get in there and farm the PvP when these double and triple events land. And guys, that is it. An absolute massive video full of useful information and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leaving a like really does help me and my channel out and I do appreciate that support and I'm about to yawn because I'm knackered. But yeah guys, every month I give away a fully customizable controller. To be in with a chance of winning it, simply drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and follow the Gleam link at the top of the video description. The controller can be for Xbox or PlayStation and it will be sent anywhere in the world. So good luck to everybody who enters. But on that note guys, I am out.